بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ناظرین میرا نام ہے علی نیازی اور آپ دیکھ رہے ہیں پروگرام رپورٹرز ڈیسک ناظرین آج کے پروگرام میں سب سے پہلے ہم بات کریں گے چونک سے لاہور کا مہری کا علاقہ ہے وہاں پر بجلی چوروں کے خلاف کریک ڈاؤن کیا گیا ہے درجنوں بجلی چور جو ہیں انہیں دھر لیا گیا ہے اور بجلی چوری کرنے والے افراد کے خلاف مختلف پولیس اسٹیشنز میں ایف آئی آر بھی درج کروا دی گئی ہیں بتایا جا رہا ہے کہ بجلی چوری کرنے والے ملزمان کو چالیس لاکھ روپے تک کے جرمانے کیے جائیں گے ناظرین یہ کچھ صورتحال ہے یہ لاہور کے ملحقہ علاق علاقے یقینی طور پر جہاں جہاں اس قسم کی روداد پیش آئے وہاں پر جو ہے اس طرح کے اقدامات اٹھانے چاہیے ظفر اقبال کھوکھر ہمارے ساتھ ہوں گے ہم ان سے بات کریں گے اور جانیں گے کہ ان کے پاس اس بارے میں کیا معلومات ہیں ظفر اقبال کیا بتائیں گے آپ ہمارے ناظرین کو جی بالکل لشکی اور لاہور پرویز کے احکامات کے روشنی میں ایس سی ایم صاحب اور کانجرا عبد الخلیل نے کاروائی کرتے ہوئے جو یہ بجلی بہتر بجلی چوروں کے خلاف کاروائی کی ہے جن میں مختلف تھانوں میں انہوں نے ایف آئی آر کے خلاف اور پینتالیس لاکھ روپے کے جو انہوں نے جو جو صارفین سے بجلی چوری کرنے والے ان کو جرمانے کیے ہیں جی ٹھیک ہے ظفر اقبال ہمارے ساتھ آپ موجود تھے اور آپ وہاں کی صورت حال ہمارے ناظرین کو بتا رہے تھے آپ بتا رہے تھے کہ صورت حال یہ ہے کہ جو لوگ وہاں پر بجلی چوری کر رہے ہیں ایسے عناصر کے خلاف کریک ڈاؤن کیا گیا ہے اور اس کریک ڈاؤن کے نتیجے میں درجنوں ایسے افراد کو قانون گرفت میں لیا گیا ہے جو کہ بجلی چوری کر رہے تھے ناظرین دھنالا خود سے ہم بات کریں گے جہاں پر محکمہ انہار اور بلدیہ نے تجاوزات کے خلاف جو ہے وہ کریک ڈاؤن کیا ہے تجاوزات جہاں بھی ہو یقینی طور پر وہ نہ صرف ٹریفک پہ بندش کا سبب بنتی ہیں بلکہ وہاں پر رہنے والے لوگوں کے لیے مشکلات کا باعث بھی جو ہے وہ بن جاتی ہیں دنارا خرد میں ایسے ہی افراد کے خلاف کریک ڈاؤن ہوا ہے اور سڑک کو کشادہ اور دونوں طرف شجرکاری کرنے کے لیے یہ اقدام اٹھایا گیا ہے ہم بات کریں گے ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہوں گے رنانا خرد سے ہمارے رپورٹر ملک مرور ریحان ان سے ہم بات کریں گے اور جانیں گے کہ کیا صورتحال ہے ناظرین یہ رنانا خرد کی کچھ معلومات ہیں جہاں پر محکمہ انہار اور بلدیہ نے جو ہے وہ تجاوزات کے خلاف ایک آپریشن کیا ہے ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہے ملک منور ریحان ملک منور ریحان کیا بتائیں گے آپ اس حوالے سے جی بالکل اسسٹنٹ کمشنر رینالا خرد قدسیہ ناز کی ہدایت پر بلدیہ رینالا خرد اور میک منہار نے مشترکہ کاروائی کرتے ہوئے ناجائز تجاوزات کے خلاف آپریشن کیا سڑک پر موجود ٹھیلے ریڈی بان سبزی فروشوں اور سڑک پر موجود دوسری ناجائز تجاوزات کو ہٹایا گیا اس سے پہلے میک منہار نے وہاں ناجائز قابلین کو باقاعدہ نوٹسز بھی ارسال کیے تھے کہ سڑک کو فل فور خالی کر دیا جائے مگر اس کے باوجود لوگوں نے سڑک کو خالی نہ کیا آج محکمہ نہار اور بلدیہ رینالا خرد نے سڑک پر موجود ناجائز تجاوزات کو ہٹا کر ان کا سامان قبضہ میں لے لیا اور اس بارے میں مزید محکمہ نہار اور بلدیہ کے افسران کا کہنا تھا کہ ہم سڑک کو کشودہ کشادہ اور دونوں اطراف سے شجرکاری کرنا چاہتے ہیں تاکہ سڑک آمد و رفت کے لیے کشادہ ہو سکے جی ٹھیک ہے بہت شکریہ ناظرین ہمارے ساتھ آپ موجود تھے ملک مور ریحان اور وہاں کی صورت حال ہمارے ناظرین کو آپ بتا رہے تھے ناظرین یہاں پر ہم دے رہے ہیں وقفہ وقفے سے آئیں گے واپس تو مزید خبریں آپ تک پہنچائیں گے ہمارے ساتھ رہیے گا ناظرین بریک کے بعد ایک بار پھر سے خوش آمدید بات کریں گے ناظرین ہم رحیم یار خان سے جہاں پر وزیراعظم کے سخت ترین احکامات کے باوجود طاقتور لوگ جو ہیں گندم اور آٹا مافیا جو ہے وہ سرگرم ہیں جو صورت حال ہے وہاں پر یہ جانیں گے ہمارے ساتھ موجود ہیں منیر چودھری ہم ان سے بات کریں گے اور جانیں گے کہ وہاں پر کیا صورت حال جو ہے وہ بن پائی ہے منیر چودھری کیا بتائیں گے آپ اس حوالے سے میں سندھ پنجاب بارڈر پر گزشتہ دنوں آٹے اور گندم کے پکڑے گئے چھ ٹرک سپرداری پر مالکان کو واپس کر دیے گئے ہیں اور ڈسٹرک فوڈ کنٹرولر مار ایاز کو سیاسی دباؤ پر بھی چنیوڈ ٹرانسفر کر دیے گئے ہیں 
لیکن گندم اور آٹے کی سمگلنگ بدستور جاری ہے گزشتہ رات بھی سندھ پنجاب بارڈر پر پولیس تھانہ کورٹ قزل نے گندم اور آٹے کے چار ٹرک پکڑ کر اپنی تعویل میں لے کر مقدمہ درج کر لیا مگر سیاسی اثر و سوک کی وجہ سے ان مقدمات میں فلور مل کا نام ظاہر نہیں کیا گیا ذرائع کا کہنا کہ یہ گندم اور آٹے کے پکڑے کے ٹرک بھی چوری شفیق علیم ملد کے ہی ہے جو پی ٹی این پی اے چوری آسف مجید کے برادر نسبتی ہونے اور اثر و سوک کی وجہ سے محکمہ ذرائع اور پولیس پر سخت دباؤ ہے جو خانہ پوری کے لیے امنیر شادری ہمارے ساتھ آپ موجود تھے آپ کا بہت شکریہ ناظرین آپ کے لئے چلیں گے بہراز سے ڈیوارس جہاں پر وزادم پاکستان تقریب سے خطاب کر رہے ہیں I think as introductions go, uh, this should be very easy. Uh, I think uh, the Prime Minister, who we are delighted to have over here on behalf of the Pathfinder Group and Martin Dow, uh, is, is known to the entire world. Um, starting his career... Pakistan breakfast. خان ڈواؤس سے موجود تھے جہاں پر وہ پاکستانی کمیونٹی سے ناظرین خطاب کر رہے تھے پروگرام آتے ہیں واپس خانے والد سے خواہد شامل کرتے ہیں جہاں پر زخیر آندوزوں کے خلاف زلہ انتظامیہ کی جانب سے کریک ڈاؤن جاری ہے کیا صورت حال ہے وہاں پر یہ ہم جانیں گے ہمارے ساتھ ہے سعید عباس بھٹی سعید عباس بھٹی کیا بتائیں گے آپ ہمارے ناظرین کو دوزوں کے خلاف کریک ڈاؤن جاری ہے تو اس وقت میرے ساتھ موجود ہیں ڈپٹی کمیشن ہے آگا زہیر عباس شیرازی صاحب تو مزید تفصیل ہم ان سے جانتے ہیں جی سر بتائیے گا یہ کہ اس ہفتے میں کتنی کاروائیاں کی گئی ہیں زہیر اندوزوں کے خلاف اور کتنے کو جرمانہ کیا گیا ہے کیا کسی کے خلاف ایف ایجار کا بھی اندراج کروایا گیا ہے جی گورنمنٹ آف پنجاب کی ہدایات پر ہمارے تھرٹی ایٹ کے قریب میسٹریٹ ہیں جو یہاں پر ایکٹیو ہیں جن کی سپر ویجن تحصیل لیول پر اسیسٹنٹ کمیشنر سے بان کر رہے ہیں اور پچھلے ماہ بھی ہم جو ہماری رینکنگ تھی جو فائنز تھے وہ پورے پنجاب میں ہم نوے نمبر پہ تھے اور اس دفعہ بھی جو فگر تھی وہ تقریباً بائیس باز بھٹی ہمارے ساتھ آپ موجود تھے اور وہاں کی صورتحال ہوائی ناظرین کو آپ بتا رہے تھے ناظرین ڈیوہ صاحب کو ایک بار پھر سے لیے چلیں گے جہاں پر پاکستان وزیراعظم عمران خان ایک تقریب میں موجود ہے But it is the right path for Pakistan because it puts Pakistan for long term growth economic prosperity and political stability and, and putting a security situation. I think we all, when, when an outsider looks at Pakistan, he's often confused, especially our friends. It's a land of immense potential. A young population, a many natural resources, copper, gold, natural gas, a beautiful country. I know, I know the Prime Minister talks about the mountains a lot because that's favorite thing, but down south there are wonderful beaches. You go towards, you go, you, 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 you go past, you go past some of the beaches in Karachi and the beautiful marine blue water, pink sands of the sort that people spend thousands of dollars to, and they go to European resorts and resorts in the Caribbean and we have it all. And what has been lacking? One single thing, governance. And that's what the Prime Minister has brought and we are very proud of you and we wish you the best and with that I let you First of all, I would like to thank Mr. Trump Sagal. He is instrumental in getting me here. Otherwise, the sum of $450,000 for two nights was, I could not I would not have burdened my government for this huge amount for two nights. So Ikram Segal got together and with Imran Chaudhary, my uh, other friend, and so they sponsored it. So it's, it's the cheapest any Pakistani prime minister has ever come to uh, <laughs> uh uh, but even before this, uh, Ikram always invited me because he wanted Pakistan's point of view to come across uh, to the international audience, and especially Davos, where you have world leaders in business, in economy, in uh, uh, political leaders. So uh, I have been here before. Uh, and and uh, I always found that this is, uh, Davos is, is such a gathering of people Normally, you would sort of uh, meet such people o over a period of six months a year, you know, traveling around. But here in one place, 
you uh, tend to meet uh, people uh, you know who you can learn from who you can interact with so ikram thank you very much for inviting me here and being a partial sponsor of my visit uh, let me just uh, first just a brief thing about myself so um, uh, you know you understand how i uh, what my motivation is and how i function um, you know there were far more talented cricketers than me when i started my cricketing career and uh, when i started a uh, lot of people were skeptical i was dropped after my first test match i played and uh, uh, i was butt of all the jokes of the cricket team uh, and then it took me 3 years to get back into the team and then uh, you know i like like anyone who competes at that international level uh, you face you learn probably the most valuable lesson which any human being being can learn in order to succeed in life and that is the ability uh, to face the bad times what decides uh, how much a human being will fulfill his potential in life depends upon his ability to face the bad times because problem is very talented educated people with much greater potential than me i found that the reason why they could not achieve their potential in life because because they could not face the bad times people gave up <clears throat> uh, an easy comfortable life is a disaster for human potential uh inherited people who have inherited wealth i have very rarely found them uh, achieving their potential in life life is too easy <clears throat> when i played cricket i went to the most privileged school in pakistan with the best facilities we had coaches the best uh, cricket ground uh, probably uh, no school would have a cricket ground like that but the boys from my school could not compete with those boys who were who who played in the streets who played under the lights the uh, our boys could not compete with them because they did not have the hunger they did not have the drive <clears throat> and it's that drive that actually propels people to achieve their potential uh we are uh, i built this university in pakistan the first private sector university in a rural area and i built it with one intention that the underprivileged people who had no chance of having higher education they must be given an opportunity the university i built was affiliated with bradford university in england because i was the chancellor of bradford university so we affiliated uh, it with that university the boys who studied and and girls who are studying in namal university come from poor backgrounds 75% from urdu 80% urdu medium schools studying at an english university degree <clears throat> and first year they struggle we used to have to teach them english to give them foundation foundation course they struggled the first year second year they sort of stabilized and in bradford university the average first divisions are about 12% 13% maximum in namal university the same bradford university degrees uh examined by bradford university uh, professors they got between 55 to 60% first divisions <coughs> poor ba background people who you know didn't even have strong basics because they had greater motivation they had greater hunger so <clears throat> uh in in sport i learned how to compete and the most again the valuable lesson face the bad times so i give you an example once we got thrashed by india we went to india to play a series we got thrashed So now the team is on the way back to Pakistan, and what is the discussion going on in the dressing room? 
how to get to Pakistan in the middle of the night so that there would be no one at the airport. <laughs> when we arrived at the airport at 4 a.m. in the morning, the custom people made us stand there for two hours, <laughs> confiscated everything, and they made sure that it was light enough so that when we got out, the taxi drivers sort of gave us hell. <laughs> and yet at the same airport, I arrived uh, seven years later having beaten India. And we never even made it to the customs. There were 150,000 people at the airport to receive us. Okay. So you see, you see, when you have these ups and downs in life, <coughs> you, the most valuable lesson, you never lose your head when you go up. And you, and you know the dynamics of coping with the bad times. Mm -hmm. So the difference uh, uh, and my philosophy. I was nine years old when I wanted to be a test cricketer. I watched my first cousin. My mother took me to this match in Lahore. He scored a century against England. And I looked at him and I said, I want to be a test cricketer. And it never occurred to me that I would ever become a test, test cricketer. I always thought it was a matter of time. I never realized the struggle I had to go through. Similarly, when, um, when, I, began, uh, when, I um, when my mother died of cancer, I didn't realize there was no, there was not a cancer hospital in Pakistan. Uh, and then I realized that, you know, I could take my mother out for cancer treatment. What happened to the 95% of the people in the country? So that's when I decided I would build a cancer hospital. I, I have to confess I was never much of a charity type of a guy. I was not into really giving people because basically the philosophy of professional sport is that there are no prizes for coming second. You do not have compassion for the losers. So um, it was actually uh, watching that pain that I decided, uh, watching my mother suffer, I decided I wanted to, be, to build this hospital. And I'd never realized how difficult it would be. Four years of running around, uh, I wasn't getting anywhere. And then uh, Mr. Razak now is sitting here, he was, I, he was on the board of governors and he knows the meeting. We called 20 doctors of Lahore, top doctors, and said, look, how do we go about building this cancer hospital? And this is after four years of running around like a headless chicken. And uh, out of 20, 19 said you can't build a cancer hospital in Pakistan. And one said that you might be able to build it. You cannot give free treatment to poor cancer patients because it's very expensive treatment. So uh, my dream was to build the hospital. And so what I went through, the things I had to do, was the greatest learning experience in my life. And eventually, when we built the hospital, <clears throat> just to give you an idea now, the hospital was built in 700 million rupees. The annual loss the hospital suffers for treating 75% of the cancer patients free, which was my dream. It wasn't just the dream of building a hospital. It was that poor people should get free treatment. The annual loss is 10 billion rupees. Hospital bill for 700 million, annual loss is uh, 10 billion. So uh, imagine, I mean, had, I, had someone told me that, look, this is what you, after building it, you have to spend 10 billion collecting every year. And then I had <clears throat> to go to politics. Everyone laughed at me. There's no precedence of, in a two-party system, a third party coming through. There's no precedent. Look at England. Look at the US. You can't break through because they are entrenched. They have systems, a third party, an outsider. So for 15 years, people laughed at me. <clears throat> 15 years, people, I was butt of all the jokes in politics. It was me sincerely going around, look, we want good people to come. Let's all good people get together. And I didn't realize that the good people were the most cowardly people. They were scared of coming into politics. So anyway, <clears throat> the thing is, uh, the Almighty has given all of us tremendous potential. 
We are his greatest creation, Ashraf al -Makhlukat. Problem is, we don't know this. And we let ourselves down. Because that potential, we only achieve that potential if we know how to struggle. We only achieve that potential if we have these big dreams. And whatever the human mind can picture, can happen. This is how, how much potential all of us have. Problem we face is that we give up on the way. When the bad time comes, you know, we put up our hands and say, you know, we have a plan B. The human potential, if you, the bigger the dream, the bigger the struggle, but you achieve it when you do not, when you do not have a plan B. There is no going back. You have to burn your boats. Wherever you go after a big ambition, you should never, never, never think of compromising on that dream. So now I come to my dream of Pakistan. You see, I believe, and I always believe, because I grew up in 60s, <clears throat> when you cannot imagine the optimism we grew up with about Pakistan. It was one of the fastest growing countries. Our head of state, Ayub Khan, went to the United States. The president of the US came to receive him at the airport. He had a ticker tape reception, open car, people throwing, you know, those, when they, how they uh, greet those people in the US. He goes to England, he's treated like royalty. Pakistan, there was hope. People believed the country had potential. It was the fastest growing country in the 60s in, in Asia. We were, we were a model for development. South Korea came to Pakistan, Malaysia. They looked upon us. In HSN, I studied with Malaysian princes. Our university degrees were recognized everywhere. So I grew up with this thing. We had this hope. So we let ourselves down. And we let ourselves down because unfortunately, we, we came up uh, with, uh, first of all, we could not, uh, our democracy couldn't uh, uh, get grounded in Pakistan. We, when the democracy f faltered, we had the army. When the army came in, they wanted their own puppets. When they, uh, so who were not leaders. And so we went into this, uh, this musical chairs. But I always believed that the moment Pakistan had good governance, this country would rise. And the moment Pakistan went back to its original vision, there was a reason Pakistan was made. We keep forgetting why was it made. The reason given by the founding fathers, <clears throat> the ideological father of Pakistan, the great Iqbal, and what our great leader, Jinnah Qaid Azam, a brilliant mind, the the, the most outstanding barrister in British India, highest paid barrister, brilliance, man of complete integrity. They all, if you look at the, uh, the vision of the founding fathers, they wanted Pakistan to be a humane, just society, a welfare state. And we deviated so far from the vision. And nations, Nations without a vision die. Why should people want to be part of a nation if there's no vision? So I always believe that the moment our vision, the reason why this country was made, if we could restore that vision, this country has more potential than any other country. Reason why this country has so much potential? Because the best resource are the people. We have dynamic people. I mean, I give you an example. When I, when I used to be playing cricket, India is seven times the size of Pakistan. We regularly thrashed them. Pakistan had squash players with hard. There were more squash courts in Oxford University. Pakistan had two squash champions for ten, uh, ten years each. <coughs> Our hockey hardly financed to anything. We had always the talent. People of Pakistan not just had the talent, we had the resources. I mean, since I've been in power, I'm amazed what the, the resources the country has. Just out of the 14 copper and gold fields we have in, in, in Rekode, 
just two of them. And this, and guess who told me the, 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 this foreign company which we are in litigation against, this chairman I was speaking to, he told me, he said, do you realize that these two, uh, 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 the blocks, the profit is $100 billion. Just the profit of two blocks. This is just, I didn't know that. And we have coal reserves. We, we should never have shortage of electricity. Our own coal reserves. We have the most fertile land. When I went to China, they told, I mean, I looked at the productivity of China. It's three, four times of Pakistan. Uh, we have six number of cow, uh, uh, cow and uh, buffaloes in our country. We are number six. Uh, 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 per average per cow liter uh, of milk is, is six liters. In China, it's 24 liters, 20 liters. Denmark, is 30 liters. So we have, what we have done is that we, we neglected research in Pakistan. We ne neglected the basis, basics, not, not spending money on our human resources, not spending money on education, not worrying about the education of the masses. It was only for a tiny elite. Which country does it that only uh, 800,000 uh, uh, children go to English medium schools? 3.3 million <coughs> children in Urdu medium schools. 2.5 million children in Dini Madrasa. No one paid any attention to it. So, now, my vision of Pakistan. We need to return to make it into a welfare state, inclusive development. Our, our whole idea is now that after the 60s, there's the second government which is going to spend money on industrialization. We are giving incentives, encouragement. We want, we want to promote industrialization because that will create wealth. And from that wealth creation, we want to spend money on the bottom tier of our society. So we have already, despite limited resources, we have the most ambitious uh, poverty alleviation plan called ESAS. I mean, we have allocated in very difficult times 190 billion rupees, the, uh, the highest amount ever for uh, poverty alleviation. My belief is that if we can concentrate on the bottom section of our society, the government facilitates investors, industrialists, makes it easy for them to do business. In our first year, we have gained 28 places in ease of doing business. Um, improve our governance system. I honestly believe that, that we will release the potential of our people. We have pro Let me tell you where the challenges are. The number one challenge is, and by the way, I was reading a blog of uh, Prime Minister Mahathir Muhammad. Now remember, he is probably the greatest uh, statesman of the Muslim world. His achievement in transforming Malaysia, everyone knows about it. Now, uh, and, and, and 20 years he was in power. And when I read his blog, he might as well have been talking about Pakistan. He said, the problem they are facing is from an entrenched, corrupt status quo, which has been removed after 50 years, one party system. Same us, we are up against a corrupt status quo which ruled Pakistan for 30 years. And they are entrenched and they have linkages, people who benefited from a corrupt system. So our biggest challenge is facing these people spreading gloom and doom every day. Uh, uh, every day some sort of scandal comes up which is blown up, all orchestrated. Basically, they do not want the government to succeed because us succeeding means not just the, them out of power, but they will uh, end up in jails, which some of them already are. Malaysia faces exactly the same thing. Secondly, we face deteriorating, uh, degenerated institutions. What corruption does, number one thing, the corruption, uh, uh, what the corrupt do is they destroy state institutions because that's the only way they can make money. If I want to make money, I have to uh, ha hamstring all institutions that dispense justice. So that's a big problem. You can destroy state institutions very quickly, but to restore them takes time. 
So we are in the process. It's a slow process. But gradually, we, we, we institution by institution, we are restoring them. Uh, the, uh, the other problem we face are these huge debts accumulated by the uh, previous government. Our first year, the total amount of uh, tax we collected, which was four trillion, two trillion went to debt servicing. How do you, uh, how do you fund <laughs> health, education, everything when you just uh, are left with this uh, small amount of tax collection? This year we have to, uh, uh, our debt servicing is three trillion. The other problem we face is the, 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 the actually the biggest challenge is the energy sector. We have this huge, huge circular debt in, 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 in electricity. And because of this, which is almost, I think, 1.5 trillion, 1.7 trillion. 1.7 trillion circular debt means every, uh, every year we have this huge interest on this debt. So that is a big challenge, and we, we have decided when we go back, we will get all the stakeholders. We are going to discuss how because we cannot put more burden on the consumers uh, of electricity because this, the, these interest payments, this, so this is the other challenge. And of course, the problem is that you give expensive electricity to the, to the industry, uh, to especially the small medium industry. So it, it, it reduces our competitiveness in exports. So this is, this is a big challenge. Um, the direction we have taken is A, industrialization, which means wealth creation. Secondly, export-oriented growth. So far, our problem ha have been that we, we, uh, we, our growth rate goes up, and then we have a bit of a boom, and then we go bust, because we then end up with a big current account deficit. And then we have to go to the IMF. This time, what we are trying to do is, the big difference is uh, export-led growth. And so this change, of course, is quite painful because the growth rate has to come down. Uh, you know, people are, people are hurting in Pakistan. As I, as I keep mentioning, I've never faced so much abuse and hammered so much in the media as I, as I have in the past one, one and a half years. Being in public eye for 40 years, used to criticism because, you know, when you lost, you, you knew what you were in for when you won. You know, but this uh, what one and a half years has been exceptional. I really had to develop a very thick skin. In fact, thank God, mercifully, you know, I know that all the dynamics of bad times. So the first thing you do is do not read the newspapers. <laughs> <laughs> I, and, I, and, and secondly, do not, whatever happens, do not watch the evening chat shows. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying, uh, I try to make my team, my cabinet, I make them try and understand these dynamics of bad times. Problem is, they watch the chat shows and they come. Uh, I watch them in cabinet meetings, all shell-shocked, sitting there. <laughs> so anyway, I'll, I, don't worry, I'll, I'll get them on the same page soon. But uh, we have to. Uh, you, um, the situation which Pakistan is, where you, got, you have this huge uh, 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 interest payments on these debts. Secondly, uh, uh, not very functional uh, state institutions. This process, if, if we want to change course and improve and achieve our potential, we will have to go through these, this difficult time. And interestingly, I was reading uh, in the blog, Prime Minister Mahathir Mohammed saying exactly this as be patient. I tell them, he says, be patient. <laughs> Two years or so, we will have to uh, struggle for a while. But I feel, uh, as I see the, the potential in the country, I feel that once we stick to these reforms, it will take uh, a lot of uh, political will. It will take courage to uh, withstand all this criticism. Uh, the only, my only thing is I hate to see uh, unemployment, people hurting at the bottom level. And we hope now that our SAS program will kick in and we will provide safety net to the, to the bottom tier. But uh, whatever happens, uh, anyone, uh, you know, when, when you have a sick economy, uh, you know, when you, when you bring in reforms, 
reforms is a painful process. I keep telling them, look, it's like we all want to go to heavens, but we don't want to die. <laughs> or maybe it's a bad example. It's like, <laughs> uh, 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 you know, we, we want to cut out the tumor, but we don't want the operation or feel the pain of the operation. So it is going to be difficult. But I think, I do feel that we have, the first year has been, um, in, in my opinion, we have done remarkably well in the sense that our current account deficit, which is the, the one biggest thing, uh, anyone looking into a, an econ economy of a country, the one thing they look upon is your current account. Is it a deficit or a surplus? Surplus means you're well. Deficit means you've got problems. So we reduced it by 75% in the first year which I think is a great achievement, and that is reflected in the rupee stabilizing, in fact, gaining a little bit. Uh, it, it is reflected in the stock market now, which has regained all, the, all what it lost, uh, and it's reflected in investment, foreign investment. In the last one year, we had 200% increase in the foreign investment. So the direction is right, uh, but I still feel that you know, we have a struggle ahead. But I'm an optimist, and I think we are on the right track, and I, I see good times ahead of, for Pakistan. Thank you. Uh, we're really short, short of time, so we're going to have only a few questions. Um, please, uh, after that, yes, please. Please identify yourself also. Yes, Abid, sir, please identify yourself and then ask the question. <laughs> when you were in school. ہم پاکستان عمران خان تقریب میں موجود تھے لوس میں اور جہاں پر انہوں نے پاکستانی کیونٹی سے جو ہے وہ بات کی ہے آپ نے زیادہ پاکستان کی گفتگو نادر سنی ہے اس کے بعد ہم پروگرام میں آ جاتے ہیں واپس اور خبروں کا سلسلہ جہاں سے منکتا ہوا تھا وہیں سے ہم اس کو جوڑتے ہیں اکارا سے کا بشاول کرتے ہیں جہاں پر اکارا میں بہت سی شہر آئے ایسی ہیں کہ جو تاہل ٹوٹ پوٹ کا شکار ہے الیکشن سے قبل وہاں پر جو نوائندگان ہیں وعدہ وعید تو انہوں نے کیے تھے وہاں کے رہنے والوں سے کہ یہ شہر آئیں بنا دے جائیں گے ترقیاتی کام ہوں گے لیکن ایسا ہوا نہیں ہے شاہد کھوکھر ہمارے ساتھ ہیں شاہد آپ کیا بتائیں گے اس حوالے سے جی بالکل اس لئے اگاڑا سے صدقارہ روڈ پر موجود ہوں یہ جو صدقارہ والی سائٹ پر ایک سڑک یہاں پر ہے جو گزشتہ پندرہ سالوں سے ہی ہے یہ جو ٹوٹ پوٹ کا شکار ہے اور اس پر کوئی بھی جو ہے وہ کام نہیں کیا گیا یہاں پر علاقہ مکینوں کی طرف سے کافی ساری شکایت جو بارہا یہ جو پریس کلپ پہنچتی ہیں اسے والا سے یہ جو مزید ہمارے ساتھ یہاں علاقہ مکین موجود ہیں ان سے جانتے ہیں جی بتائیے گا کیا مسئلہ ہے آپ کو جی میرا نام غلام فرید ہے اور میں ڈیلی یہاں سے آتا ہوں ڈیلی میں ملازمت کرتا ہوں اکاڑا میں یہاں پر ڈیلی آتا ہوں تو ایک تو روڈ یہ بہت زیادہ ٹوٹا ہوا جگہ جگہ سے ٹوٹا ہوا اس کو تقریباً سات آٹھ سال ہو گئے ہیں بلکل یہ ٹوٹا ہوا کسی کی اس طرف تو جو نہیں یہاں تھا کہ ایم این اے ایم پی اے جو یہاں سے ہوئے ہیں ان کی اس کی طرف کوئی کسی طرح کی توجہ نہیں ہے اس کے علاوہ یہاں پہ آئے روز یہاں پہ ڈکیٹیاں ہوتی ہیں کوئی بندہ ادھر سے نکل کے آ جاتا ہے کوئی ادھر سے ڈکیٹیوں ہونے کی کیا وجہ ہے ڈکیٹیوں ہونے کی یہی وجہ کہ روڈ ایک خراب ہے جس کی وجہ سے ڈکیٹیاں تو کوئی فصلوں سے ادھر آتے ہیں کوئی ادھر سے آتے ہیں ہم کو کچھ لو ہوتے ہیں بائیک بھی بگا نہیں سکتے یا کوئی اس طرح کوئی ہم ادھر تو نہیں جا سکتے جی بالکل جی جیسا کہ آپ ہمارے ساتھ آپ موجود تھے آپ کا بہت شکریہ اکڑا سے اکڑا کی صورت سے آلہ ہمارے ناظرین کو بتا رہے تھے ناظرین ہم قصور سے بات کرتے ہیں پروگرام کے آخر میں جہاں پر سب ڈویزن قصور نے بجلی چوروں اخلاف کریک ڈاؤن کیا ہے کیا کامیہ بھی حاصل ہوئی ہے سعید احمد بھٹی سے جانیں گے سعید کیا بتائیں گے آپ اس حوالے سے میں اس وقت موجود ہوں سب ڈویزن بہتر پورا کے لینڈ سپریڈن وارس علی بھلر کے ساتھ ان سے جانتے ہیں کہ انہوں نے اس ماہ میں کتنے بیجی چوروں کے خلاف کاروائی کی ہے اور ان کے خلاف کیا کیا اقدامات کی ہیں جی سب سے پہلے میں مشکور ہوں دن نیوز کا جنہوں نے ہماری آواز بجلی چوروں کے خلاف عوام تک پہنچانے کی کوشش کی ہے اس سے پہلے میں ہم نے چیف اگزیکٹیو لیسکو مجاہد پرویز چٹھا کے وزن کے مطابق جناب حاجی ناصر یاز گرمانی ایسی قصور کی ہدایات پر ایکسین جمشید زمان رولر کی ہدایات کے مطابق ملک راشد وان ایسٹیو بہادر پورا اور اس کی پوری ٹیم وارس علی بلر لینسمنٹ اور پوری ٹیم نے تقریباً اس ماہ میں پندرہ لاکھ 
के नज़दीक बिजली चोरों को रिकवरी डाली है और तकरीबन 25 के नज़दीक एफ आई आर थाने में भेजी हैं और 15-20 बंदों को अरेस्ट भी करवाया है इस महीने में दो लाख डी टैक्शन बिल डाला गया दो लाख यूनिट टैक्शन बिल डाला गया अब हमारी ये आवाम से मतालबा है या तो बिजली चोर हमारे हमारे साथ आप मौजूद थे कसूर से नाजिन एक बार फिर से आपको डिवोर्स ले चलेंगे जहाँ पर वजम पाकिस्तान पाकिस्तानी कम्यूनिटी से खिताब कर रहे हैं so is there a comprehensive plan to make it show because there's a lot of dissatisfaction amongst the masses in pakistan as well and uh, in the overseas communities which we are uh, representing yeah, look look uh, i repeat <coughs> that you know when you are going through a process of uh, reforms and specifically institutional reforms you cannot hope that one institution the moment the government changes it improves uh, especially in a, in our uh, case where we, it's the first time pti has been in power uh, at the federal government level so therefore it is a slow process as i said you can destroy an institution immediately but to build an institution does take time and especially when um, uh, you know when unfortunately the the government institutions were used as as Uh, giving employment to people, so they're all bloated institutions. Uh, I give you an example of our, our health ministry. We examined the health ministry and we discovered, out of 370 people working in the health health ministry, there are only 15 with health background. The rest are all just people uh, give, uh, given employment there. As same with PIA, same with railways. all government corporations have been loaded with these people uh, uh, with with no work and so as we all know that if if for one job you have three people no one will work and this is what we face and then when we bring the changes in unfortunately they go to the uh, the courts and get a stay order uh, uh, you know we there was a case of in one of the hospitals uh, we discovered that in the cardio uh, cardiology institute uh the mortality rate was 25% out of 125 used to die so we removed the head of the uh, the department he got a stay order and was there for six more months so it's you know it, the, the, there's a whole pro- a process of change takes time because we now uh with the new chief justice we are going to sit down and work out how to stop this uh, nonsense where uh, they can all go and whenever you try and remove someone unless you have a process of hire and fire incentives and punishment no institution can work so whenever you try and fire someone they go and get a stay order so anyway there's a whole process it's a holistic change and it will it will happen it'll take time aisha no no excuse me aisha assalam alaikum um i'm my name is aisha nawaz choudhry i'm a member of parliament from punjab and i am from the ruling party of pti um one of the questions that i wanted to ask was that you mentioned shaukat khan i mean how you did great work and raised money but one of the things that we've been seeing is that even at shaukat khan when you were developing it there was always a uh, cost to d- doing those even around and raising funds when we want to represent pakistan internationally Ikram Sagal sir people like Imran Chaudhry sir have stood by us and done great work but sh- should the government not stand up now and do these things and in- include it in its own cost to represent itself better you see uh, Aisha I believe that uh, we should save money from um, spending all these monies on on um, on these expos which which are productive but a country which for the time being is uh, is trying to uh, follow a very rigid uh, program of austerity starting from me i mean this visit is uh, what almost 10 times less than the previous prime ministers who came here in the kram who came to your uh, show and came up with the pearls of wisdom but it cost us 10 times more than my visit so we it's a it's an austerity program but what we feel we should rely on we have a very we have 9 million pakistanis living abroad and the gdp of those 9 million pakistanis in my opinion 
is almost 50% of Pakistan's GDP of 200 million people. So we can use this uh, uh, resource and, and, and they can sponsor things. So I, I'm all for a conservative. I've stopped all my ministers going on any junkets. I don't allow them to go anywhere. They, uh, first, whatever, whenever they say I've got a trip somewhere, I immediately cancel it. Then they have to convince me that really it is productive for Pakistan. <laughs> I'm Sada Fabid. I'm a social entrepreneur. Pakistan has under 26% women in its formal economy. IMF has calculated gender parity would add 30% to the GDP. So what I'm interested in knowing is how are you, in your capacity, increasing women's inclusion? Because when women grow, we will all benefit and Pakistan will prosper. Absolutely, uh, not just women and, and the Lord. You see, what is the Chinese model? Chinese, mo Chinese proved to us that if you raise the bottom people, if you raise the standard up, the whole, that's real prosperity. In our case, unfortunately, the skewed development where a tiny rich people are, have a lot of money, and there's this bottom sea of poverty. It doesn't work. No country, in my opinion, can ever, ever prosper with this sort of skewed development. So our SAS program specifically targets women. You have to see it. It's a very comprehensive program developed for rural women, poor women, loans for them, how to graduate them, how to raise, uh, uh, raise the level of income, how to get the mobile, this mobile phone, give them apps so that they, they're empowered by the, the, directly the money comes to them. You know, so we've gone a great length to make sure that, you know, the uh, our women, especially the women at the bottom of the social ladder, how we can raise them up. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay. So, what I understand from your answer is that you are not in the government for the job and the fact that the position is that we are not in the government. Now we are for the government. So, we are there. For a while. No, we until, we, until we become very prosperous. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one more question. Then. So, and the, and the last, after that, the last question, please. Second last question. Hi, my name is Zara Hassanani. My name is Zara Hassanani. I'm an education and health specialist working in the World Bank. You spoke earlier uh, very eloquently about. Was it awesome? دیبوس میں پاکستان بریک پاسٹ کی تقریب وزیراعظم عمران خان اس وقت تقریب سے خطاب کر رہی ہیں آپ ٹی وی سکرینز پر براہ راست دیکھ سکتے ہیں دیبوس میں جہاں پر اس وقت وزیراعظم پاکستان عمران خان کا خطاب جاری ہے ان فیکٹ ایل بی آن آر ویب سائٹ وی ویل گیو یو دی ڈیٹیلز آف آر احساس پروگرام ایٹ ایز ون آف دی موسٹ کمپریہنسی پروگرام بیل Uh, the bottom tier, how we are directly uh, 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 giving them cash, then how to graduate them to a high level, the sort of uh, uh, instruments we are using to, ra uh, to raise their uh, productivity, uh, rural women in urban, uh, giving them loans for startups. So we have a whole range of things now. The whole idea is, is, is this bottom tier of, of our society, and specifically women. Last question. موسیقی It's exactly what Mahathir Muhammad keeps telling Malaysia, be patient. You know, it, uh, uh, you see, uh, it is, I have to say that uh, it has, as I said, it, it has been the most uh, difficult uh, 15 months of my life. I have never experienced so many, uh, so many uh, problems on multiple fronts. It's not just one issue, it is just... Uh, fighting, uh, firefighting on so many different fronts. 
Uh, the main thing was, of course, the stabilization of the economy. We were worried for a time that we would default on our loans, and the scenario of a default is just too, it's the ultimate nightmare scenario. So we faced these very difficult times, but then there were all these other problems, because, you know, there's, there's a neglect of state institutions. Then we have uh, people at the bottom uh, level. Then the education system, I mean, then the government corporations, which are bleeding. So it wasn't just, it's not facing uh, 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 problems in, in one domain. Uh, but what I feel is that we are about, we are getting ready to give people a comprehensive roadmap now. Because we now know what we face. We'll prior, prioritize uh, uh, the problems and the solutions. And we are going to come up with a roadmap telling people that, look, this is, these are the challenges we face. This is how long it will take for us to get out. But there's hope at the end, uh, light at the end of the tunnel, because Pakistan actually is a very rich country. I lo I've looked at the other countries. The resources Pakistan has, just one area, tourism. I mean, just imagine Pakistan's, I look at uh, this one of these wonderful mountains here in Switzerland. But I am probably the only Pakistani politician who's been all over Pakistan. Uh, just our northern areas, just the northern areas of Pakistan are twice the size of Switzerland. And the scale of those areas, Switzerland just cannot compete with it. No one knows about it. No one knows about, only now people are discovering, you know. In Condé Nast magazine, Pakistan is now considered the most exciting tourist destination. Why? Because what has happened is we haven't done anything. This mobile phone has done everything. People go on holidays, they, they take pictures, they put it on their Facebook, and people say, is this Pakistan? And so in one year, tourism doubled in Pakistan. One year, just by the mobile phone. So we have not, this is the first time we are concentrated on the tourism sector. Imagine, just, just to give you the, the, the sort of potential we have, we have beach tourism, probably one of the best uh, on, the, uh, on, on the coast, one of the best beach tourism. We have lagoons, totally untouched. We have uh, uh, one of the ancient civilizations, the river, in, uh, the Indus Valley civilization, 5,000 years old. We have four religions have some of the most sacred sites in Pakistan. Buddhism, Sikhism, as for Sikhs, the Makkah and Medina is in Pakistan. I didn't even know that. Uh, Hindu, Hinduism, Sufism, the greatest Sufi sites, and then, of course, the northern areas. But no one knows about it. So now, for the first time, we are, we are working out how to sell, our, uh, sell Pakistan to the tourists. Imagine Malaysia makes $20 billion from tourism. It only relies on beach tourism. Uh, uh, Turkey, $40 billion. And this Switzerland get, makes $80 billion. Our total exports are $24 billion. So imagine the potential we're sitting on. I'm just talking about one. I'm not talking about the minerals. I'm not talking about if we just double our agricultural productivity, where the country can go about our export, our linkages with China, CPAC, special economic zones, China wanting to relocate the industries because our labor is now much cheaper. Into So I mean, the country is, you know, the possibilities are the sky, and I, I'm not just a born optimist, since I've been in power, I realize, you know, we are sitting on a gold mine, and inshallah, this country has great times ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Can I just come up, please? Uh, first of all, uh, Prime Minister, thank you for being here. Uh, thank you for believing in a private-public partnership that you made a small committee. Uh, I'm grateful to Imran, I'm very grateful to Dr. Fikhar Bukhari, and uh, of course, the person who's not here will never see We all set it together. And uh, obviously, we got it down to $68,000, I believe. Right. And, uh, no, no, no. And 68000 uh, the two, the previous two ones were $500,000. One was $600,000. My trip to the U.S., uh, the, the uh, United Nations General Assembly, was $160,000.
Uh, one, uh, Zadari did it for 1.4 million dollars. Nawaz Sharif did it for 1.3 million dollars. Even, uh, uh, you know, in Punjabi we call Relu Kata. Kata. <laughs> uh, Hakan Abbasi, he did it for 800,000 dollars. So I'm just saying that a country which was accumulating in 10 years, four times they increased our debt four times. Look the way the leaders were spending the taxpayers' money. Um, I'd like to mention <laughs> that uh, I deliberately put, you have the present and the vision for the future. And both sides of you, I deliberately kept the future of Pakistan. On both sides, sitting with you. The reason is we have to believe in our children. We have to believe in our uh, destiny. And the Prime Minister is very right. We have the resources, both material and this thing, and we can do it. The Prime Minister, I must also thank uh, the Commission. My friends like Ross Perot has been here for, I think, 12 years constantly. Thank you for, for signing down to the title of industry and life for some. I will thank them. And thank uh, Jeremy for being here. Thank the World Economic uh, Forum team, Andrew Fletcher, who really, really helped us. And not forget me, who has Peter Max putting everything together. Uh, the thing is, we have now stabilized. We have the resources for the drive. We would like to show you that that is possible. For this event, we brought together from Pakistan a small group of people from my company and a group. And if you permit me, I'll invite them on the stage to have a group photograph from Pathfinder Group if they can come up, because they are the ones who put all the $68,000 together. ڈیووس میں پاکستان بریک فاسٹ کی تقریب جس سے وزیراعظم عمران خان تقریب سے خطاب کر رہے تھے کرپٹ لوگ سب سے پہلے ملک کے اداروں کو تباہ کرتے ہیں پاکستان میں ٹیکس کا حصول بھی ایک چیلنج ہے وزیراعظم عمران خان کا کہنا تھا کہ پاکستان کا سب سے بڑا چیلنج کرپشن ہے پاکستان کے پاس انتہائی باصلاحیت افرادی قوت موجود ہے ایک اور چیلنج سابقہ حکومتوں کے لیے لیے گئے کرزوں کا امبار ہے سابقہ حکومتوں نے افرادی قوت تعلیم اور صحت پر اب تک کچھ خرچ نہیں کیا عمران خان کا کہنا تھا کہ پاکستان کی ترقی کے لیے بہتر نظام حکومت ہونا ناگزیر ہے پاکستان میں ترقی کرنے کی بہت صلاحیت موجود ہے انسان اللہ کی بہترین تخلیق ہے شوکت خانم کے حوالے سے انہوں نے کہا کہ پچھتر فیصد غریب لوگوں کا علاج اس ہسپتال میں کیا جا رہا ہے عمران خان ڈیووس میں پاکستان بریک فاسٹ کی تقریب سے خطاب کر رہے تھے